Okay, take five. Or somewhere on there. <laughs> I ran out of memory. All right. Um, basically, next video is going pro. So hopefully you followed the other advice, um, whether either from me or other people, uh, as far as getting started clowning. So definitely make sure you have the personality. If you're ready to go pro and you're ready to go out and start charging for your services, make sure you're ready. Um, it, it'll really hurt if you're not. So if you're not prepared and you're going out there and you're basically charging full rate or what you know, the competitors are, char competitors are charging in your area and you're not up to the skill level, it's really going to hurt you. It'll hurt you in the long run. So make sure you got your, your balloon twisting good, you're fast, you're quick, you have a good repertoire of stuff you can do. Same thing with face painting, make sure you're quick at that. You don't want to be going out and doing festivals and having lines of kids and you're really, really slow. When I first started out, um, even before I started clowning, when I was just kind of playing with it and met another clown and was kind of getting into it, we went to a, they'll have clown fest at the local zoo here in Cleveland. And there was this one guy, it was a, his name was Amore, he was an older gentleman, but he was doing balloon twisting, had a line of kids. He had one of those little squeeze ball, little rubber pumps. So literally he had a line of kids, asked the kids, what kind of balloon would you like? He took out the balloon, he put it on the pump, and went And it's like, oh my god. It took forever just to blow up the balloon, even then, and then, and then he started making something. But just the time it took him to blow up the balloon was just, oh, it's just, it was like, whoa, you can't do that. You can't do that with a line of kids. You got to make your lines go fast. If you want to have a good name and a good reputation, you got to be quick, you got to be funny. You got to make sure everybody's happy. People were not happy in his line. I mean, when you're taking three, four minutes per child, it's just no. I, I try to keep everything under a minute if I can. Eh, two minutes. So two minutes is usually good. I usually tell people about 30 balloons in an hour. And that's usually a good, a good thing. So it leaves me time to make a few simple things, a few more complicated things. So definitely get, get the arts, get the skills down. Make sure you have your face. Find your face. Make sure you have a good-looking face, good-looking clown face. Um, I do the hobo style because when I first started out doing clowning, I was doing a lot of bar work. So I didn't want to be the happy clown. I wanted to be more of the, the hobo drunk style clown. And then, I mean, I got away from that, but I, I had my face and everybody knew what I looked like. So I was kind of stuck with it. And I'm happy with it. Um, I got it down. I can get my makeup on pretty quick and easy. Costume, same way. Go at the beginning, try to go cheap. Try to let the income from the clowning carry it. Definitely. Because if, if you're thinking about going pro or going professional, not only is the income from the clown going to basically cover the expenses of the clown, it's also got to cover your daily expenses. I mean, your food, your your rent, your you know mortgage, car payments. So you definitely want to make sure that um, you're ready to take the next step as far as quitting your daytime job and going full-time. What I did when I went full-time is basically, um, I have a degree in electronic engineering, so I was kind of doing the electronic work and then was doing the clowning part-time. I did it nine years as a hobby before I even started doing it out in public. Met a clown, discovered that there was a balloon pump, because I used to blow them all up with my mouth and that was really difficult. Once I found the pump, it was pretty much no stopping me with the balloons. I just, it just took off. I, picked up on it. I had nine years of just doing the basics over and over and over again. I was ready to branch out. And as a kid I grew up on Lego, so I was always making things and always designing things as a child. And then with the Legos and then went into engineering and then finally now I'm just basically engineering and designing things with tubes of latex. So I'm a balloon twister. <laughs> so um, costume, you can get a costume from a thrift store. Just look for something fun. I mean being a hobo style clown it was a lot easier for me. But you can find flashy outfits. Um, have you ever seen the British Stock Exchange? They dress like clowns <laughs> and they're stock exchange people. You can also find just old plaid jackets. You can find flash, you know, fancy dresses, you know, something. Something to look clownish. Um, definitely bright, colorful. I tend to stick with four different colors, yellow, black, blue, and, and um, yellow are my, my main colors. So most of my costumes are around those colors. And right now I probably have about 80 shirts and about 50 pairs of pants. I got different ones just for 4th of July, just for Christmas. I've got summertime outfits. I got wintertime outfits. One of the clowns years ago said that, you know, everybody should have, you know, long sleeve shirts. Well, when it's really, really hot in the summertime, you don't want to wear a long sleeve shirt. 
So at that point, I'm like, no, I'm going to be comfortable. Definitely make sure you're comfortable. That's a, that's a key. You're not going to be happy if you're not comfortable. If you're hot and you're miserable, it's going to show. So definitely try to be comfortable with your skills and <laughs> with your physical appearance and your dress. And the, the, the best kind of marketing out there is word of mouth. I cannot say enough about the word of mouth. If it wasn't for word of mouth, I wouldn't be doing this full time. I've gotten a really good name and reputation in the area and I've worked really, really hard for it and I practiced for it and I, I got there. And when I go out, I make sure that everybody's taken care of, I make sure everybody has fun, anybody's waiting for a balloon. You know, my, my only limitation usually is time, but I, I try to make sure I know what I'm doing as far as making sure I can get everybody done in a set amount of time. If I walk into a birthday party, I can usually handle 20 kids at a birthday party doing a magic show and balloons. If I walk in and there's 30 kids, I'm not going to say, well, I can only make, I do the magic show and only 20 of you get a balloon, the, the other 10 don't get a balloon. I won't do that. I'll either shorten up my magic show or make it go a little bit faster because I can control that. Or I will make the balloons more simple. I'll just limit the choices. Did my battery go? Hold on. Oh, still recording. Alright, gotta edit that. Um, so basically I will limit my choices as far as balloon selection. So I'm always making sure, keeping it to roughly an hour. I tend to run over a lot. <laughs> That's just me. I know other people suggested not running over, but um, you know, I'm always in communication. I try to, you know, if I'm, I'm at the party, I'm the pie parker. I can guide the kids, you know, I get the kids ready, I get the kids over, I get them all to sit down, I do the show. If they're going to do cake, I bring them over to the cake, I start out the happy birthday, you know, by counting down or whatever, and then doing the happy birthday, making balloons at the table while they're eating, rather than making balloons just after the magic show where they're sitting. And a lot of times, once kids get their balloon, they're done with you. They saw the magic show, they got their balloon, they're going to run off and play. Nothing you can do about it. I mean, that's that's kids. They sat there, and that's fine. They got their balloon, they're happy. They're off and playing. So you got to do what you got to do. Um, so word of mouth is definitely... So if, if you're good, you know what you're doing, you're going out in public, people are going to see you, people are going to talk about you. And with social media, another free advertising outlet that wasn't available 10 years ago. So you do a, a birthday party, they're going to post pictures of you and say what a great time they had with you. All their friends are going to see it, and that could be business. So make sure you definitely have a website. Make sure that when you do a birthday party that all the kids get a card. A lot of times what I'll do is I actually pass out little toys and tattoos at the end of my magic show, and everybody gets a little brown paper bag. All those brown paper bags are pre-stuffed with my business card. Also, because on the back of my card, there's a balloon list that they have to usually choose from anyway. So, it's a dual purpose. But a lot of times, the kids will look in the card and go, Hey, there's something in my bag. What is this? Shameless promotion. <laughs> but you're going to need it. So, I always try to... I'm a wise sarcasm. It's what I do best. So, yeah, I tend to be funny. Um, website, definitely get. Social media, great. If you want to, maybe start out running some ads in local community kids magazines or sometimes if, you know, they're doing like a sports magazine for one of the elementary schools, you know, I try to help out that, that kind of marketing. Definitely don't get in the phone book. The phone book will drive you nuts. Drove me nuts, I got out of it. I, right now I just have a simple little line just in case somebody loses my number, but don't go. For one, it's expensive. You're going to get a lot of calls from the phone book, and every the only question you're going to get asked is, how much do you charge? I can't handle that. <laughs> it's like, And they do. And I mean, when I was in the phone book, I got a lot of calls. I never got any business out of it. So it added a lot of work. I got no business from it, and the phone book is expensive. And if you don't pay the phone book bill, they cut your phone off. <laughs> You need your phone because that's the number on all your business cards. So if you want to be in the phone book, get a separate phone number that you don't care about. And then if it's not working for you, then cancel it and ruin your credit score. But, but that's another story. You don't want to ruin your business. So stay out of the phone book. Oh, that's just not so, so good. As far as what to charge, kind of get an idea of um, what the market 
bears in your area, what other clowns are charging, what other entertainers are charging. You don't want to charge too much. You don't want to charge too little. If you charge too much, you're not going to get the business, especially starting out. If you charge too little, you may actually irritate a lot of the local clowns that you're kind of undercutting them and taking business from them. Sometimes, you know, it happens to me. As, as far as I tell customers, hey, if you want to try somebody new and they're cheap, you kind of get what you pay for. Um, I've been doing this for a while. I know what I'm doing. I can handle the crowds. A lot of a lot of newbies, they can't handle the crowds, and they just get overwhelmed. And then the next year, I get the phone call. We want you back. So so be very careful. Make sure you're ready before you go out and do it. And then you know, kind of either call the entertainers, see if there's a local clown group in your area. Um, clown trips are very common. You can search those up on the internet, depending on where you're at, and talk to people. See if you can possibly help them out on a Saturday. See if you can go tag along. You know, maybe you can pick up some skills. They'll help you. If, you know, they like what you're doing, you know, if they have an extra party that they can't handle on a, an upcoming weekend, they say, hey, can you cover this party? And then, you know, that's a good way to get out there. Um, be respectful, though, to the other clowns. If, you know, you are basically subcontracted, you know, try not to steal the business. I've had one clown do that to me. Actually, more than one, but... And basically, I sent him out to a a grand opening for a store and he basically went to the manager and said hey call me directly I'll give you a better price found out about that I no longer work for that company that hired me and that clown no longer works for me so um just be careful and, and be honest with people I mean you know talk to people and, and be straight up that's that's the that's the best thing you can do also the the at least in my area we have winter here I live in Cleveland Ohio so we do have the winter season where things slow up a lot Granted, I've, I usually leave the country in the winter, but this is actually, it's 2013, this is my first winter in Cleveland, Ohio in, in 13 years. Since 2000, I've been taking two and a half months and traveling overseas, and when my daughter was born, we went out west for about a month. So this is my first winter. I've been kind of busy. I mean, right now, you're just down to your birthday parties. So summertime, you're going to get your festivals, you're going to get your company picnics, you're going to get your church parties, you're going to get a ton of work. Kids are out of school for three months. You're going to be busy with camps, daycares, every, there's a lot more work in the summer. Also, Christmas time's a busy time. So don't think just because, oh my goodness, June was so busy, July I got a lot of parties, I'm going to quit my job. And then all of a sudden, October hits. October's not usually too bad for me, I get the fall festivals and the Halloween parties, but November, November's slow. And then January, February, March are slow. So be careful. Be careful of that. And then I'm gonna just gonna do line control here because it's very simple. So as far as lines, if you're if you're doing balloon twisting, if you're doing face painting, uh, the worst thing parents wants to do with a three-year-old is stand in line for a half hour waiting for a balloon. It's just it just doesn't work. They don't have the attention span. Parents don't have the patience to stand there. It's like, or sometimes one parent will take the other kid away, and then the parent will stand there in line, and then they're standing waiting for a balloon for their kid. It just makes for an ugly situation. The best thing to do is just don't do lines. I, I got away from doing lines. I don't do them anymore. If it's a small crowd, I'll still kind of do it because I can control it, or I'll just have the parents. Hey, the parents watch, kind of see who was here first. I'm making balloons. I can't pay attention. I'm busy. But if you guys kind of work out, and I, I explain this, always be, always be talking to your audience. Always be, you know, if you need them to help you out, people are more than happy to help you out. If um, you need discipline on some kids, you know, basically, you know, try to try to talk to the parents. Let them know. I mean, the more information you can get out there, the better off you are. Like I said, I don't do lines. So basically, what I do is, if I'm doing a festival, I'm there for a few hours. Uh, the kids will actually come up and take a number. Same thing that we used to do when I was a kid, when we went to the meat market or we went to the bakery or went to the bank. A lot of times, you have to come up and take a number and then you wait for your number to be called. So what I do is I actually have pre-printed stickers with numbers and they usually, they're usually they usually a thousand per roll. They number one through 500 and then one through 500. A lot of times at festivals you don't want to do one through 100 because sometimes they will overlap. So, <laughs> and I've had that happen before. It's like they pull off the number. Wait a minute, you just called this number. Oh, that was the number, <laughs> that was a hundred numbers ago I just called. So be very careful. So I usually go 1 through 500 and never have a problem with that. And they also, if you can see that, they actually have my clown name on there, Flower Clown. I used to have them with the website, but now I just put Flower Clown because if you search it, Google search it, you'll find it. And then the number. And then I just call out numbers. One thing you got to be careful with, especially with um, some of the teenagers and the older kids, they're smart. 
They know. They know. They know the game. So one kid will come up and get a balloon, and then maybe 20 minutes later, he'll pass the number to his friend, and then his friend will come over and say, hey, you skipped my number. Okay, yeah, I'm past that number. Let me check my list. <laughs> I pull out a list that I keep every number that's missing. I write down every number that's missing. So that way, when I see the number and the kid comes up, I can go, you're on the list. What kind of balloon would you like? Oh, nope, that, that, that number's already been used. Sorry, you have to grab a new number. So you got to be careful, because they'll be, they'll be sneaky. Can't blame them. Why not? Um, another thing that you want to do is try to figure out, try to have the kids figure out what kind of balloon they want before they see you. On my card, and basically when you do it, when you're starting to do it professionally, get big business cards. I use postcards. I use a 4x6 postcard, standard postcard. And with a very nice, very fancy picture on there with all my balloons, on the back, there's a list that the kids can choose from. So with the little kids, as long as you keep repeating it, you know, take a number, take a card, please choose off the list on the back, not off the front because they're a little bit too difficult. Or you could just put your clown picture on the front and not have any balloons. I'm a balloon person, so I like to, to show off what I do. But basically, I kind of broke this up. This is actually my Christmas card, so the first few are Christmassy. The second little bunch here are the really, really quick one. They're the one ballooners. And then the rest are the other balloons that I will do if I have a line. So Christmas time, they can pick from here. If I'm getting towards the end, um, what I'll do is also monitor my numbers. So I put my numbers away, depending on how many numbers are out and how many and what number I'm on. So I look at the roll, I see you know what number it is, I know what number that I'm making currently, and I can judge the time distance in between because I know how fast I am and how many balloons I can handle in that amount of time. So if it gets to the point where it's like, okay, I've got 20 numbers out, I've got a half hour left. I'll put the numbers away because I can know I can probably make 20 balloons in a half hour. So I put the numbers away. If anybody else comes up and says, where can I get a number? You just say, I've got another party I've got to get to. I put the numbers away. At the end, if I have a little extra time, I'll make you a sword. If not, I carry little prizes or something in my bag and I can you know, give them something or give them a round balloon, just something really quick. Just to make them happy. Make sure you make everybody happy. That's the key. You're an entertainer, you're a clown, you got to make kids happy. That's a rule. That's a rule. So it's really helpful if the kids will actually figure out what kind of balloon they want before they get up to you. What takes a lot of time, <laughs> used to drive me nuts, is, you know, you basically ask, you know, the child, what kind of balloon would you like? And they just sit there and go, I don't know, what balloons do you make? <laughs> and then you've got to go over the whole list. I make flowers, hearts, teddy bears, blah, 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 blah. Pick something. I know, and then it's like, you know, you got to make the line go fast. And, and every time you run into that obstacle, it's going to delay your line. And it's going to keep delaying it and delaying it. So it's going to take more time. So if you if the kids know what they want, you can make it fast. They're there. They're ready. Boom, you pound out the balloon. You can move on to the next child. So definitely have them pick it out. And definitely tell the parents, you know, please pick off the list. Sometimes what I'll do is at the last, you know, I, I got a lot of numbers out or the kids have asked for something complicated, I'll have them just at the last half half hour, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, just pick from the simple balloons. If to the point where there's just way too many kids there and they've only had me there for a very, very short period of time, the last 15, 20 minutes, I'll just do one balloon animals. I'll either do dogs or swords or something I know I can make a lot of in a short period of time. So that has saved me. Another clown in the area basically limits the amount of balloons he'll let people see that he has. So he may be doing a two-hour party for the first hour. He has his whole balloons out there. Then he kind of hides a few of them. And then he's got less balloons. And then once it gets towards the end, he's out of balloons. A lot of people are going to understand that, especially little kids. I don't have any more balloons. So I'm done. Kind of makes sense. I've tried doing the, the balloon, you know, where you put, you know, I'm the last person in line and handing it to the last person in line or putting, you know, having them hold a sign. A lot of times, sometimes, I've done that before and the kid left. <laughs> so it's like, wait a minute, where did he go? I'm, our life was supposed to be ending, and now it's gotten longer. So be very careful. The numbers, I've never had any problem. I'm really good with these. They work really, really well. Any other questions, please feel free to leave a comment, and we'll just leave it at there. All right, YouTube, have a good day.